So this is my Maze program. Um, I'm starting out with creating a .h file, so I have a header file where I can put in my variables. Uh, I do this so I can have external variables, uh, oh, global variables, um, so I can use them in different functions inside my um, my main uh, program. And I declare my player's x and y position, the x and y position for our exit, the enemy's x and y positions. Um, I use a previous x y position where my player was just before. Then I have an uh, int called tokens. I use this for my combat systems. Then I'm undeclaring some variables I'm not using. Uh, then I have uh, my three enemies. I have some bool checking if they're dead. Then I have a game over bool and a first game bool and a bool that checks if the player's dead. And um, then inside my uh, CPP file, I start out by including my uh, main header file, so we can call the variables. Uh, then I use IO stream for my uh, C in and C out. And then I use C time for my random number generator. And I use the standard namespace. Then I have a variable called uh, get player input. It's where uh, um, the maze register um, th what uh, keys the player uh, uses. Then I have an update maze which updates my whole maze with my enemies, and then I have one that updates it without my enemies. Then I have a function that solves my maze. Then I have three functions for uh, my enemy's uh, combat system. Um, and I tried to make a fourth one, but I got some weird errors, so um, I uncommon that one. Then I have my first struct, which is a game user. It has a string, which is his name. Uh, it has some integers for health, ar attack, arrows, range attack, attack bonus, mana and uh, which race it is. And the name is uh, underscore player. <coughs> then uh, I have a struct for my first race and the health, attack and arrows, uh, range attack, attack bonus, and mana and uh, the name. And that's an elf. Then I have the same for my race number two which is a human. Race number three which is a dwarf. And then I have my enemies. I have my enemy number one. Um, which uh, is called Goblin in the first time because I made this a dungeon runner but I changed it to a jungle runner so now it's a monkey and uh, it's uh, easy to change the name just change it up here and it will change during the whole program then I have an elephant and a tiger and it has different stats then um, I take and declare my integers from uh, before uh, I declare them as normal integers here, which is the player xy position, the exit xy position, the player's previous xy position, the enemies xy in position, then I have the bulls, uh, the booleans for um, if the enemies is dead, if the game is over, if it's the first game, or if it, the player is dead. Then I have an integer for tokens, which is I come to later. Then I have a constant character here for the height of the armor my my maze. It's 21 high and 41 uh, width and the player's uh, icon is an X and the end icon is an E and these are constant characters so you cannot change them later in the game then I have a character for the goblin icon which is a G this is not a constant character because I actually want to remove that character from the game uh, when the when the goblin dies um, then I have a C for a cave troll and O for an orc and then I have an icon for dead, which is just a space. And I have my uh, my maze here, and this maze is a perfect maze with only one solution. So it's pretty hard with uh, some fog, uh, fog of war. Then um, I have my main function here. I have a s rand, which uh, generates my random number. Then I have uh, some uh, new characters. I have a new game choice and a solve choice. Then I have a string for a uh, player's name. I have a character uh, for which race to choose. And I have an int for uh, which token to choose. Then I declare what uh, the values of my global variables. Um, my tokens, it can generate between uh, 0 and 4 tokens. And then it will plus with 2, so there's always a minimum of 2 tokens. Um, and then, uh, oh, 0 to 3. Um, 
then we'll have my X position for the player, my Y position for the player, my uh, exit position, enemies positions, and I, the enemy I, uh, I added them, uh, so they are constantly at the same spot in the maze. Um, then I have if my goblin is dead, and in the beginning it's not. The same with all the enemies. And uh, this first game is true because it is the first game. And game over is false because the game is not over and the player is not dead. Then I put in my uh, uh, my icons for the uh, enemies into the maze on the X and Y position. And um, then I kind of start the program here, uh, which has a welcome statement. And then um, the user enter his or her name. And this is stored in the player.name. And then uh, it says uh, welcome and to the player name, so it automatically uses that name. And then uh, it's possible for the player to choose a race to play, an elf, a human, or a dwarf. And these have different stats, so that uh, will help and have different play styles um, and different ways to uh, attack the enemies. And here you can choose a race, and uh, if you choose uh, E for elf, the player.race is equal to the elf.race. So all the uh, Valuables from uh, the player struct is equal to all the values from the elf struct, and the same with the, the human and the dwarf. And uh, when that's done, then uh, it will start out by telling you that you chose to play as your name and uh, which race you're chosen to play, and then you are presented with your basic stats, and these are the stats for your character. And then you're given a random uh, number of tokens from uh, 0 to 3 plus with 2, so that's uh, 2 to 5 tokens um, and you can do use these to buff your powers uh, and your stats so you can choose different uh, uh, different numbers to to get more stats um, and here we have a for loop that uh, runs through until we don't have any more tokens um, I have to declare that we're using tokens here but it says that the exp uh, expression result is unused um, but uh, I have to do it even though it's uh, the int is declared another place but I have to declare it here so it knows that th th this is the tokens we're using so it tells us how many tokens we have left and you're then able to choose between uh, getting one more attack bonus three more arrows, ten more mana, ten more health um, one more uh, range attack or one more uh, attack and uh, then it's added to the player stats and uh, the player stats is then uh, updated with your new stats and then you are ready to start the game and then I have a do while loop that uh, runs my whole program and it checks if uh, it's the first game which uh, if it's not the first game and if it's not the first game then you are asked to uh, if you want to play again and then if you choose uh, yes, then you are returned to the main uh, function and else uh, the game is uh, ended with return zero. But uh, since its first game starts with being true, then this is not run the first time. And then you ask if you, you want the computer to solve the maze. I made a function that solves the maze for me. Um, and you can choose yes or no. If um, you choose yes, then uh, I have a while loop that runs until the maze is solved and it uh, sleeps one second, so it's not updated uh, constantly and so fast that you cannot really understand what's happening. It updates maze without my enemies in it, because I want just to solve the maze, I don't need my enemies in it. And then it runs the function of solving the maze, and it does that over and over until my player position is equal to my uh, exit. Um, and then it will say the maze is solved, and uh, it will break, and then we will have my variable game over is set to true and then that will run up and say okay now the game is set to true so we will ask if you want to play again and my first game is now equal false because this is not the first game and um, if that you if the user does not want to solve the game uh, then uh, the maze will be updated with the enemies and while the player is not dead, then we will run this loop here. Um, we will get a player input, check which way the player wants to go, then we will update the maze. And um, if the maze 
So if the player's x and y's position is equal to the end position, then we will break it, and uh, the game will be uh, over. But if the player's x and y position is equal to the enemy one's x and y position, and the first enemy called Goblin is not dead, then we will have our Goblin combat. And the same with the Cave Troll. We will have the Cave Troll combat, and the same with the Orc. Um, and then if the player is dead, then we will have uh, nothing happening. But if the player is not dead, then uh, we will have you won, and the game over is equal to true, and the first game is equal to false, and the player's dead is equal to false because the player did not die. And this loop runs until the game is over, and then returns zero uh, to stop our program. And uh, then our main function is, is over. And now we get into uh, some of the other functions used. We have a goblin combat function, and uh, this function starts out by saying you found a goblin. This is now called um, a monkey since we changed the goblin.name to be monkey. And uh, your stats are we have some tabs in, so it's lined up nicely. Um, And uh, we have the enemy stats, then we have uh, the player stats, and the enemy stat. And then uh, you're giving three options. You can attack with the melee, or you can uh, fire an arrow with range attack, or you can heal yourself. And uh, then we check uh, for our while loop here. If uh, our goblin's health is uh, above zero, then we will run this um, function. Uh, there's a while loop, and um, we have an integer called Goblin Combat Choice, and you are able to choose between the three mentioned above. Number one, then we check if the attack does hit. I made a random number between uh, zero and uh, five to check if if that number is zero, then I'll take that as a miss. So, 20% of the time, the player can miss. And then I have a new integer called melee damage, and that's equal to player attack. So if the attack is dot, if the, if the variable does attack hit is uh, equal to zero, then uh, I'll print out that the, the player name misses the enemy name. Else I'll take the melee damage and multiply it with the attack bonus. And uh, attack bonus usually uh, one or two. And then we have the goblin, uh, or the enemy health, is uh, minus the melee damage. And if uh, goblin health is uh, below zero, then I set the goblin health to zero. Because I have times where uh, my player hit, so the health went below zero, but then it will come out as a minus, but I just want it to be zero. And um, then I have the player name hits the enemy name, doing some amount of damage, and then the enemy name's health dropped to its new health. And then I have uh, case number two here, if the player chooses to use an arrow, it checks out if, um, if the player has more than zero arrows left, then we will use one arrow by taking player arrows minus minus, and then the, uh, once again we check if the arrow does hit, this time it's between one and three. Um, it's easier to miss with an arrow. Um, and the range attack is equal to player.range attack. And uh, if there it does hit, then we will again have miss, and else uh, we will have the range attack multiplies with the player attack bonus. And uh, then we will have the goblin health is minus the range damage. And if the goblin health is lower than uh, zero, then we will have the goblin health is equal to zero. And once again, we will have. Uh, an output saying player name shoots enemy name doing range damage and uh, enemy name drops health drops to its new health and the player name now has the new amount of arrows left and uh, if the player um, has less than zero arrows then we will uh, print out that the player name is out of arrows and if the player wants to uh, um, heal, then uh, we check if it has more than zero mana. And then we'll multi uh, take out 
uh, 10 mana and then we will uh, have a variable called int heal HP which uh, defines the amount of uh, health will be healed and that's a number between uh, 0 and 9 and then we will plus with 20 so it can be between uh, 9 and uh, oh uh, between uh, 20 and 29 and uh, the player's health is now equal to the new health um, and then the player name heals for uh, uh, amount of HP and it's now so and so health left and mana left and if the player has less than uh, ten, uh, less than zero mana then uh, the player name is out of mana and then we break and uh, if our goblin's health is uh, below or equal to zero then uh, the goblin is uh, dead and the player name killed go goblin name and then uh, the user is uh, has to press Y to continue and then we update the maze and we break out and uh, then we have our uh, dust goblin hit because it has to hit back on the player and that's a number between uh, one and uh, er, zero and nine and um, that's uh, less because the enemy has to it has to be harder for the player and uh, if that's equal to zero then uh, we'll have that it misses or else the player's health is minus equal to the goblin's damage and if the player health is below zero then it will just be zero and then again we print out the Goblin's name hits player name doing some damage and the player's health drops to the new health. And uh, if player health is below or equal to zero then uh, the enemy killed the player and uh, we will have you died and you can press Y to continue and then the player will be dead and the game will be over and this is not the first game then we will go back in our first uh, function and uh, we can run the game once more. And this is 100% just copy pasted <laughs> down to the cave throw combat and the orc combat same that happens it's just different names instead of goblin it's orc and cave troll and we have a lot of uncommon code okay so here we have our player input this is where the player can move and uh, if uh, the player presses A we will have the uh, X position then we have minus one on the y position um, uh, and if that's if that's a, if it tries to move into a hashtag then we will get an error and or if it's not trying to move into a hashtag then we can move the player and we do that this with the d then we uh, plus the y with one on the w we minus the x with one and on the s we plus the x with one and if you press something else, we'll have uh, an error saying press something. And here we update our mace. Um, we have our mace here. And we check if uh, the goblin is uh, not dead. Then we will have our uh, goblin icon somewhere in the mace where we on our uh, enemy X and Y position. And if it is dead, then we will have the dead icon, which is just a um, space, so it's not there and the same with our cave troll and our orc and then we put in the player so we so when the uh, enemy and the player is on top of each other then we will have the player on top therefore we declare it here last um, and we have uh, our exit position we put that in and then we write out uh, our the, the maze and we do this um, by counting from uh, uh, we count it from 0 to uh, the height which is uh, 21 and then uh, we press enter uh, and then we do the same with the width which is 41 then we print out the maze and the maze is printed out as it is seen here on the screen so it's not uh, reversed or anything and then we have our updates maze without the enemies function and this does the same as above we just don't have the enemies inside the maze and we do this. Uh, we use this update maze without enemy when we use when we solve the maze by itself. And here we try to solve the maze. We uh, set the player's x and y position uh, to a dot uh, because then we check uh, if the player's new x and y position is not a hashtag, and if it's not a dot because it cannot go backwards uh, because then it could just 
move back and forth on the two spaces that it's into. Um, and then it can move that way and again checks if uh, a new position is not a hashtag or not a dot then it can move that way and it does that with all four uh, directions and that way it can solve the maze. So um, that's the code and uh, let's see how that works out. So I'll run it here. It says welcome to jungle crawler and uh, you can enter your name. So I'll do that and uh, then uh, you can choose a class to play and I'll play as an uh, elf and uh, then it says you have chosen to play as Frederick the Elf and I can see my basic, basic stats here I have a lot of mana, not that much health um, on the other hand I have uh, a lot of range damage and I have some arrows and an attack bonus and I have been giving two tokens so that's kinda unlucky since it can be between two and five um, and I can choose what I want to do so um, I'll choose uh, two so I can get some more arrows then I have eight arrows and one token left and then I want uh, some more range damage because I will want to use my arrow so I'll take five and um, then I have, uh, have uh, five range attack and eight arrows and uh, now I'm ready so uh, what can I do first I'll try and uh, just uh, solve the maze by itself no I'll actually just move through it so this is my maze here um, and you can see uh, I have an enemy here and I have an enemy up here and up here so uh, I think I'll go up to the cave trail first so I'll move to the left I try to use some uh, system commands so I don't have to press enter each time and it works but um, it will not be cross platform because it's mag only system commands um, uh, so I chose not to do that so you have found an elephant and my stats are these and um, the elephant stats are this so first I want to fire an arrow and see what happens so I fire an arrow and I miss this elephant that's, uh, that's sad then the elephant uh, hits me. Okay, there's a uh, bug there that needs to be changed. And then uh, my health drop. Then I will try and fire an arrow again. And now uh, I shoot the elephant doing 5 damage and the elephant's health drops to 45. I have 6 arrows left and the elephant shoots. Uh, it has to be changed. Uh, do, and I have 45. Then um, I'll try and heal a bit. So. Uh, I heal to 29, now I have 69 health and 90 mana left. And I'll try and uh, use some melee. Oh, that's, uh, that's not good, I'll, I'll heal again. And I'll uh, use an arrow. Uh, and an arrow more. And an arrow more. And now I have 4 arrows left, so I'll probably heal and do some melee do very low melee damage. Well, I have to heal two times more. I only have 50 mana. Um, oh, I'm missing a lot. Oh, now it only has one health left and I attack it and it dies. So I can press Y to continue. Then uh, I'll try to go down to the O and see what happens, which way I have to go there. So I found a tiger and I can see I have three arrows left so and not that much health so I'll first heal then uh, I'll shoot it with an arrow shoot it again I'll do some melee damage heal heal again do some more melee damage and I killed it I'm press Y to continue 
I have to go out again. So, and then I found the monkey, and I'll use my last arrow, and it only hits four. Uh, oh, that was actually me. I'll use my arrow, it's a five. I have zero arrows left, so if I try to use an arrow, it says I'm out of arrow. Out, out of arrows, then I'll heal. I'll use some melee. And it died. And I can continue. And down to the end of the maze. And this would be a bit harder with Fog 4, but I'll show that in a second. And I ended it, and I can try and play again. So, yeah, sure, I'll play again. Enter my name, choose another name. Choose my tokens, and then I can get it to solve the maze for me. And this is uh, how it solves the maze. Um, it actually puts a dot down there where it just was, but I overwrite that with the. So the, the computer knows that it's there, but the user cannot see it. So uh, therefore, it's not going backwards, um, and it checks that it can go to the right. It goes into the right, then it meets the walls, um, and uh, this it has one second pause because else it would just run through it way too fast. So it's uh, almost at the end. And the maze is solved, and I don't want to play again. So that's that maze. So this is um, how it did with the, the console and ASCII characters. And now I just want to show what I did uh, just uh, one day with the Open Frameworks. Um, and uh, I have that here. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the code. Um, but just I use some struct just as in the other program. Um, I have those as uh, I have the variables defined. I use my same maze. I print it out. Print out in a bit different way, but still I use uh, an add-on called the uh, OFX uh, click down menu where I can have a menu. So I made some menu choices. And I have some message boxes from an uh, add-on called OFX message box. Let us set up some uh, sync here. Uh, I have to uncomment uh, the GL enable uh, GL depth test because uh, some of these add-ons here you, uh, they don't work with that. So my maze is not looking that pretty, but uh, I can use add-ons. I zoomed out a bit for the camera distance. Uh, then I'm drawing uh, my maze here. Oh, oh I'm, uh, yeah, I'm in the drawer here. I set the background color. I test uh, some booleans to check if this is the first game. Just that's another one if the game is set up. Uh, and if the first game. And then it, uh, if it's not the first game and the game is set up, then I'll draw a menu. I can choose from the menu here. Uh, the enemies are put into the maze. The players put into the maze. And the end position put into the maze. And then I draw the... Uh, uh, maze, I have the camera, I have some different uh, things that happens when you meet the different enemies. Um, I have something printed out to the screen here with the uh, frames per second. And again, what happens if uh, we meet some of these enemies? This is basically what's been fighting uh, in the other program. Um, and then I set up my menu here as uh, OFX CD. Uh, M event. This is an um, OFX uh, click down menu event. I set up some menus, and then I have some key presses here. And you can toggle full screen, or uh, you can uh, disable uh, rotation with the mouse. Um, in the header file, I, I set up some the menu variables. Set up some other variables here. Then uh, I changed the. Um, uh, change some of the attributes in the message box add-on. Um, I went into it where you can uh, define message boxes. 
instead of just having an OK and cancel yes no yes no cancel box, I made a new one called uh, Mili Arrow and Heal box, so uh, I can actually have a box uh, with my own defined values, um, and I define this, and then I include it uh, in my f my f uh, yeah normal file here. So uh, let's see what happens if I run this. So we are presented with the. Um, uh, do we want to start the game? If I press no, then the game will uh, stop. Um, but yeah, sure, I want to do that. And then uh, you have to right click to set up the game. This is some instructions. Okay. So uh, I can see my basic stats up here. You can uh, right click and choose a race. I chose elf. Then you can choose a difficulty. Uh, if I choose hard, then it will have a small bit of uh, fog of war here down here. Um, and then. Uh, Choose medium, we will have uh, less 4 of 4 and then uh, we can choose hard. Oh, no, choose easy. There we go, we will not have 4 of 4. And then uh, I can generate my tokens, so I have 5 tokens. So let's uh, move around a bit, we can also just uh, do this here. So first um, I go into my enemy and I fight it. Then uh, what I can do, I will uh, use melee. And the problem here is that uh, it actually every frame it attacks it, it does not attack it once. So I'm not really sure how I can make it to uh, just attack once and not every frame. Um, I'll just jump up to one of my other enemies up here. Oh, this is not the right way. Um, and whoop, I found a Kitro, I can fight that usually melee. Whoop. And it did not die, so I can use melee again. And uh, I can change the fog of war to uh, hard. And this is like really, really hard to figure out where you have to go. And since it's a perfect maze with only one solution, it's really difficult to. Uh, if you don't know, I know where I'm going to do, uh, but um, this is kind of hard. Oh, and there we have it. And if I want to play again, I can do that, but. I don't want to, so I can just press no, and the program exit. So that's uh, what I've done, and yeah, I'll uh, the source code for the ASCII maze will be available in the comment.